video will cover the clouds with the general principle of formation, the recognition of certain clouds from the cockpit, and the adaptation of the flight path when meeting with a towering cumulus or a cumulonimbus. Finally, we will see how to find information on the clouds that impact airline flying the most. Let's focus on two of the parameters of, that characterize an air particle, its temperature and its humidity. Air particles are subject to vertical updraft of different intensity. During their ascent, their temperature decreases while their humidity increases up to 100%, leading to the formation of clouds. In a stable atmosphere, particles slow down and the cloud spreads. Depending on their altitude and height, different types of stratiform clouds exist. With negative temperatures, icing can occur when entering the stratiform clouds. In an unstable atmosphere, particles accelerate and may overshoot the tropopause. A big cumulonimbus under the tropics can weigh 1 billion of tons. This is equivalent to 15 million Airbus A320. The energy to keep the gigantic mass in the air is colossal. Cumulonimbus are the only clouds to generate thunderstorms. Lightning, icing and hail can be encountered within or in the vicinity of a cumulonimbus. Moreover, vertical speeds can reach up to 9,000 feet per minute and gusts can lead to excessive aircraft structural loading. So remain vigilant with the extreme rapidity of formation of these clouds. Turbulence can be very strong above a cumulonimbus or towering cumulus, so prefer lateral avoidance to vertical avoidance with at least a margin of 20 nautical miles. In case of vertical avoidance, use a margin of 5,000 feet above. It is by observing the most developed part of the cloud that one can recognize a towering cumulus from a CB. However, both types of clouds can present significant risk. The outlines of a towering cumulus are always very clean and look like a cauliflower, while the top of the CB is smoother and looks like cotton flower. Sometimes, the CB vertical movement is so strong that some particles burst through the tropopause. A cumuliform aspect can appear above the anvil cloud. Remember that the weather radar does not necessarily always display a direct measure of the threat ahead. In addition, convective clouds may have significant and unpredictable build-up speed. Use the weather radar's manual tilt and gain settings to scan convective clouds even well below the flight path in area of strong convection. Pilots may need to revert to the manual mode in order to assess the vertical structure and expansion of convective clouds even when the radar tilt is adjusted automatically. Lenticular clouds are stationary clouds that can generally be found in the troposphere. They are easily recognizable as they take the shape of cuttlefish bones, flying saucers or lenses, which is at the origin of their name. They are the evidence of a flow which has been modified up to hundreds of miles further downstream of mountainous terrain. This flow may lead to severe or extreme turbulence at the tropopause or near the ground. For the crews, when cl flying close to the tropopause, downwind of mountains, pay particular attention to forecasted or observed lenticular clouds as they may indicate the presence of severe clear air turbulence. Remember that this can occur hundreds of miles downwind of the mountain range. Furthermore, aircraft performance can be affected in the descending part of the atmospheric wave motion. So let's have a look at aviation weather products. In the METAR and TAF, only convective cloud types are identified by their codes, CB or towering cumulus. In the SIGMET, the embedded, frequent or squall thunderstorms and CBs are mentioned. However, the SIG weather charts show all types of clouds with their base and top altitudes. Pilots need to recognize on the forecast and during flight hazards linked to specific cloud types. By remaining vigilant, it will be possible to anticipate 
and take appropriate action.